So um, first we're going to discuss uh, properties of tangents. So tangents uh, are, it's, you think about it as a line that only touches one part of the circle. So for example, this part here, um, this one here is a tangent. Oops, black doesn't show up very well on black lines, but there we go. This one is a tangent because there's exactly one point there that it just kisses the edge of the circle. So only one place where it's touched. This one's not a tangent line here because there are two edges that where it touches. So um, one thing that we would call this, we call this one a secant line when it crosses through more than one place, and we call this a tangent line when it touches just one. So just wait until uh, calculus. You'll have some time to be tortured by those two words some more. Um, but if uh, anybody have any ideas what they do in calculus other than lots of math, any ideas? They draw graphs. They draw graphs, yeah, that's, they do that for sure. Um, one thing that uh, they study a lot is tangents. Um, Newton, when he was thinking about doing calculus, one of the problems he said uh, that he, of all the problems he could solve, one of them that he really wanted to know the answer to was if he has some graph, he wanted to know how do I calculate the tangent to a graph. Like right now, I could give you two points and you could calculate the line through those two points. But Newton said, of all the problems I really want to know the answer to, um, this is the one that bothers me the most. I want to know how to calculate the line that is tangent to a graph at one point. So anyways, that's kind of where calculus got built up from, and uh, or at least part of where, where the motivations came from. So you'll hear this a lot in uh, next year in grade 12 in calculus. So uh, this one here is also the tangent. These ones are the secant lines. And finally, in the last circle, um, which you can't quite see, um, this one here is the secant line. This would be a tangent line. Okay, so that's what you have to think about when you hear tangents. That's what you're looking for in your pictures. Okay. So um, we'll do our best here to come up with the first property, which is um, if we draw a tangent line and connect it to the center, let's see what we notice. Okay, so I'll start with the middle. Okay, so there's that's not a bad tangent. And I'm going to connect right where it's tangent, so I guess it's right about there, to the center. Um, and we'll think about what you, what you kind of might notice there from this picture. I'll try one on a different part of the circle, so let's try a tangent line here, and I'll connect it. And let's try a tangent line uh, here out near the bottom. Oops, that's kind of a curve. I cheated there. I didn't really get a good, uh, good spot on it, so let's say uh, something like that. So, what do you think about, uh, so far, what you see with the tangent and the line connecting it to the center? Yeah, that's, that's what I, my, my terrible artistic skills are trying to show you, that there is, uh, in fact, these are perpendicular between the tangent and the center of the circle. Okay, so that's property number one. Okay, so the line... Center and tangent <coughs> is perpendicular to the tangent. Okay. So, for example, if this was our uh, if this was our picture, then normally uh, you know this this might be difficult if you hadn't sort of seen that property already, but. That's tangent. This one goes to the center, so it's perpendicular. So uh, what comes to mind? Pythagoras. Pythagoras is the guy's name. Yes, that's right. What's that guy's name? So um, these are my two sides. So it's going to be um, 9 squared minus 8 squared. And I'll take its square root. Uh, root 17 for the missing side. Okay, so that's one way we may see that property used today. Okay, so we ready to take a look at the second property? Okay, um, this time we're going to draw from any two tangents, but we're going to draw them from the same point, so uh, or where they meet. So here's what I mean is, for example, if I was to draw a tangent like this, and then maybe over here, I draw another tangent. Okay. 
Here's the point where they meet. And, uh, you know, it might be worth drawing what we did last time, so why don't we add that to the picture? Let's, uh, so what do you think? Uh, we, we've already said we got that one property, but what do you think? Do you see any new properties that we might be able to say about these? Sorry? It is a diamond, kind of, yes? Yes, Damon? That's pretty good. So, um, which lines are we talking about? Red lines or black lines? Or those two black lines. yeah, those two black lines. They're they're the radius, so we know they're equal. Uh, the red are equal. Anybody believe that? <coughs> Is it early enough that we could just? Yeah, sure. Let's just agree. Well, let's yeah. <laughs> don't wanna, don't want to put up too much of a fight, right? How many sides are equal in those triangles? Right. There's two equal sides, and there's an equal angle. So you know the third side's got to be equal to, right? So we can also say that these edges here, this must be the same length as this. Okay, so where those, the point where the tangents meet to where they touch on the center must be equal length. Okay, so um, that's this property here. Um, let's take a look at uh, this example um, with C, C, D, E, F. And we're trying to find the missing side X. So there's a couple things that we can label on this problem right away since we know that uh, we've got uh, the radius here. So we can call that 5. <coughs> okay. And this length would be 8 on both parts of the triangle. And we've already said from the first property this has got to be 90 degrees. So what we need to do is figure out what's this missing side here. Okay. So the missing side, either one would be, let's see here, 8 squared plus 5 squared, so I get, uh, sorry, yes, still, uh, I'm still waking up myself apparently, um, but this is the hypotenuse <coughs> straight across from 90, so it should be 8 squared minus 5 squared, so 64 minus 25 is 39. So those two properties kind of come along, for, not really for free, but they're, they're, they're the easy ones that we can find with tangents, okay? So the first two properties was number one, this, the line between the center and the tangent is perpendicular. And then number two is a little trickier, but it's kind of, you can see it in the picture. It's that where the two tangents make a line from where they meet to where they're tangent on the circle, they must be equal length. So the next one that we're going to take a look at, um, pardon me? Do you, want, you want me to reword the second property? Okay, so um, for two tangents that intersect. be outside the circle because the tangents only touch the edge of it, right? Um, the distance from P to where the tangent <coughs> touches the circle So I'm not sure, uh, let's go with that for the wording. For two tangents that intersect at a point P, so here's the point where they, <laughs> they cross, the distance from P to where they touch the circle must be equal. Does that sound better? Okay. So um, the next property is a little tougher. So before we, uh, let's pause here for a second. <coughs> 